Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson uh, brought to you by Mr. G Code Machining and Bugman Productions. Um, in today's lesson, we'll be going over CNC dry runs. A uh, dry run, it's running the program without actually making the parts. So, um, exactly how it sounds, you're uh, hitting cycle start. Once you have your job all set up, uh, your, your offsets all plugged in, your tools all in there, you, know, you, you run the part, but you're actually not making, I mean, you run the program, but you're not actually making a part. Uh, this is good for safety and reassurance. Safety because you're making sure uh, the program is doing what you want the program to do. Uh, and reassurance, like I said, uh, you're making sure that the program is doing what you want it to do. This uh, dry run can save the company a lot of money and time, you a lot of time, uh, and you know a lot of troubles. So um, there's a couple of options you can do uh, when you're setting up your CNC dry run. Uh, first option uh, is you can uh, just not load the part, hit cycle start and watch it, the tool come down to where the part would be and you know watch it do its uh, cutter pass and drilling and all that good stuff. Or you can do it um, a little bit safer way, I'm not saying you have to do it these ways, but you can adjust your work offset Z value or your tool length wear comp value. So what this is doing uh, when you adjust your work offset Z value, your tool length wear comp value, it's pulling the tool away from where the part would be if you had a part loaded into the machine. So, uh, in doing so, when you uh, change the Z value, uh, it's, I say it's safer because instead of like, let's say you had, you know, you're wrapping down to your part. That's the first thing, you know, you have a drill come up, it's wrapping down to your part. And, uh, you know, for example, if you messed up your, uh, your tool comp value, so, you know, it's a couple inches off. You know, when it's wrapping down right down there, it can crash right into your fixture, your vise, the tooling column, and, you know, do a lot of damage to the, the machine, the tool, you know, all sorts of things. It's scary, you know, and scare you. But if you have it set, like, let's say, four inches, let's say you do your Z value, so it's no longer Z zero, it's like Z, like, four inches. So it's four inches above the part. So everything you're seeing the machine doing now during a dry run is four inches above the part. You know, this is, you know, good, so that way you don't have to worry about accidentally crashing the machine. I mean, you still have to worry about crashing the machine, but, you know, the, the risk of it is a, a lot lower when you change your Z values. And you can do the tool length, wear count value, to ensure every tool is picking up that, uh, that four inches or three inches or, you know, whatever value you decide to choose. You know, because if you do your work offset, let's say, you know, you have two different work offsets and you kind of forget that you had two different work offsets, only one of them is set to the four inches, you know, above your part, and then the other one's set still at zero. Then all of a sudden, you know, your tool might come in, and you're like, whoa, what just happened? So, and you know, these uh, values, you know, uh, whether you're plugging in a positive value for your, uh, your wear or your Z value or negative, I mean, that's all based off of how you made your program. So uh, just pay attention when you are changing that. Um, you know, for example, a uh, guy in my work had a program I mean, he's doing a dry run, you know, he, he was doing the tool length wear option, and he had all the tools set with positive four, but the very last tool, he had negative four. So, when that last tool got called up, uh, when it wrapped it down, it went, boom, four inches right into the tooling column. Put the machine out for a little while, you know, broke the tool, you know, I mean, the machine was down for a couple months, we had a guy, had guys from outside the company come in and, you know, work on it, so... A couple things to look for when you're doing a dry run. Um, you want to look for tooling. Make sure the right tool is, you know, get, being called up in the comps. So, like, you know, for example, if you have, you know, you're looking at the program. Normally, when I have a dry run, I have the program on paper in front of me so I can look at it. As long as looking at it on the machine. But you know, the first tool coming out should be a three-inch face mount. But in reality, a cut tap comes out. And you're like, wait a minute, there's supposed to be a three inch face mail, but a cut tab is coming out. So boom, you recognize the error, you can fix the error, fix the problem, figure it out if the program called out the wrong tool, or if you put the wrong tool in the wrong pocket. You know, but right there and then, you just saved a big crash from happening, because face milling and tapping, two different operations. Uh, you know, I look for comps to make sure it's picking up that H value uh, when you do your tool length comp, um, and you know, the radius squares and stuff like that too. Locations. Um, I like to have a, uh, a blueprint of the part when I'm doing the dry run in front of me along with the program. 
And also, too, if I have the, uh, the option to have a previously ran part also in front of me so I can see you know, where hole locations are, where slots are getting put in, where holes are getting you know, taps and stuff like that. So, you know, if I say this is my part, got the tool coming in drilling, and I know I'm supposed to drill in the corners, you know, all four corners, four holes, but all of a sudden I can see it, you know, four inches above the part, but going and drilling in the middle. So right there and then, I know something's wrong, either I have the wrong sub-program being called up, or the wrong locations being called up. So that's something you can look for. Um, your G41 and your G40, so that's picking up your uh, cutter comps. Uh, you know, so you want to make sure that uh, if it's supposed to have a G41 where it's picking up cutter comp, let's say you have a half inch mill, and you know you see the G41 being called up in the program, and it doesn't pick up cutter comp, it's still going in and doing the cutter pass. Boom, you recognize an error, because what if you forgot to plug in, you know, for a half inch mill at 250 thou radius into the, uh, into the comps there. Or let's say you just forgot that you needed to do it, and previously for that tool pocket you had called up, you had three, th uh, three eighths mill in there, and they had cutter comps, so then you, now you have the radius of a three eighths mill in there for a half inch mill. So noticing stuff like that is crucial during a dry run. Um, you know, like I said, um, you can crash the machine if you don't pick up cutter comp when it's supposed to pick up cutter comp. Or you can be making scrap parts too, you know, so. Uh, speeds and feeds. Doing speeds and feeds, uh, you know, something to pick up on, you know, that can determine whether you have the part coming out to the right finish, or whether you have a scrap part or, you know, a good part. You know, an example for this I could say is if you have a half inch drill, you know, going in like, you know, say a couple inches into a piece of steel. You know, so you're expecting some peck drilling to be going on and, you know, probably not the fastest feed rate. But it just comes in and it's bam, goes in and out. You know, wait a minute, you know, that's, that's probably not right. I'm going to look at the program, you know, maybe go ask the programmer why he has it doing that. You know, but that's something to pick up on, you know, you got you to gotta look for that stuff. And clearances. Um, you want to make sure uh, that your tools aren't going to be like hitting clamps. If you have clamps holding parts down, your vice. You know, you just want to make sure that your tools are actually uh, clear. Because, you know, if you have a programmer making these uh, parts for you, he might forget, you know, hopefully not forget, but he might forget where, uh, you know, the tool or like what's holding on to the part, you know, while it's being machined. So, you know, if he is holding on to a vice, so you got the two sides, and he's having a, a mill come down to put a slot in there, and then that um, he's forgetting the vice is there, and boom, the mill comes down, crashes right into the vice. So you want to make sure that you have proper clearances. Um, another couple tips while well, when dry running, I normally uh, do the rapid, my uh, rapid override down. It's anywhere from like five percent to twenty-five percent. You know, you don't want the machine when you, especially if you don't know what the program is going to be doing. You know, it's your first time having the program out in the machine or whatever. You don't want those tools just whipping all around when you're doing the G zero zero moves. So doing that just allows you to watch the, you know, the tool come in at a nice steady pace and come down close to your part and you're making sure that um, the tool is going and doing what it's supposed to be doing. And then my feed rate, I play with my rapid, uh, my override for my feed rate a lot too. My first part, let's say I have a job that has like five parts. So the first part, I might slow it down, you know, maybe put it at 80% like or something like that. And I'm going to watch it do its cutter pass. And then let's say for that cutter, you know, it, it does everything perfect. And I know the next four parts are cut, calling up that same sub-program to do that, uh, the, the same cutter path. You know, then at that moment, I might, if I feel really comfortable, then I'm going to turn that rapid, I mean that feed rate override up to me like 150%. You know, because it's not really cutting anything. It's not like you're going to break the tool. You know, it's cutting air right now. So you can do that to save yourself a little bit of time. Um, so dry runs, it's uh, an essential task. I believe there's no rule or law saying you have to do dry runs, but it's, I think it's great for safety and reassurance. Um, your company is never going to see the money you're making from dry runs, but they'll see the money they're losing from not doing dry runs. So, you know, for example, you do a dry run, it takes you an hour to do the dry run, you know, make sure everything's good. And then, boom, no crashes. The, you know, the company's not going to see that, you know, they're just going to say, hey, I wasted that hour of you doing a dry run, or they might make you do dry runs, which is, you know, a good thing, but don't feel that you doing dry runs is a waste of time or, or money or hurting your company, you're actually helping your company, because if you do crash a machine due to not doing a dry run, now that machine is out, and um, 
it's not making money, you know. Like, I don't know if you ever heard the term where, you know, they sell, they sell your time, they're not selling your money. So if that spindle isn't moving, you're, you're not making money. So that's why it's essential to do dry runs. But, um, yeah, so if you have any questions, please uh, leave it in the comments or message me. I'll be happy to answer them. Other than that, have a great rest of your day.